Hello? Rachel, can you hear us? I can hear you. Thank you, we'll get started. Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, if I could have everybody stand for a moment of silence and salute to the flag. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adequate notice of this meeting was provided to the Union County Hawk, advertised on December 15, 2022. Notification was sent to the Star Ledger and is posted on the municipal website, the Municipal Public Bulletin Board, and filed in the office of the municipal clerk informing the public of the time and place according to the provisions of the Open Public Meeting Law, Chapter 231, PL 1975. Uh, we're good with online. He has to mute YouTube, Kyle. Councilwoman, can you um, mute your, are you on the phone? I'm here. We can hear um, the meeting in the background, though, on your phone. Is there a way you can mute that? was provided to the Union County Hawk, advertised on December 15th, 2022. What does she need to do? Because Kim can text her. I gotta, I gotta look up the code for what mute is. All right. Councilwoman, can you um, mute your one? <laughs> I'm here. We can hear um, the meeting in the background. They're on the phone. They're away. You can mute that. Mayor, can you hear me? Councilwoman, we can hear you. We're trying to figure out um, whether the issue Issue is you or us. Um, there is a delay, and we hear our meeting repeated back to us. So we're just trying to figure everything out. If you'll give us a second. Sure, I'll mute my phone. Should we move on and then we'll see? Okay. And it's still streaming though? Okay. All right, Councilman, we're going to get started. Okay, um, Ms. Cameron is uh, excused for the night. So we have Mr. Harris uh, tonight playing the role of clerk. <laughs> uh, so Mr. Harris, if you could do roll call, please. Uh, Mayor Blumenstock. Here. Councilwoman Hers. Here. Councilman Carney. Here. Councilman Lazaro. Here. Councilwoman Nolde. Here. Councilwoman Salmon. Here. Council President Graham. Here. A uh, roll call of staff and professionals, please, Mr. Harris. Kyle Harris, Borough Administrator, here. Here, here. Adam Abramson, Borough Attorney. Here. Doug Stouffer, Chief of Police. Here. Mike Disco, Borough Engineer. Here. Okay, we are going to get started with the report from our Borough Engineer, Mr. Disco. Floor is yours. Mr. Disco, can you make sure just to um, make sure it's on and speak into the mic if you could turn it towards you and get a little closer. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, everybody. I presented agenda this 
morning and I'll go through it. And if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer it. And I do have one topic not on the agenda. I'll do it at the end. So we took bids on June 8th for our Municipal Aid 2022 project. I believe that's on the agenda tonight for award. And um, that's excellent. It's DLS contracting. It was under budget, under our uh, bond estimates. So we were able to award the base bid alternate one and alternate two for a total of $540,911. I listed some other numbers down below on the agenda, what we asked for, what we uh, estimated it would be, and what the grant amount is, which is 330000 So it seems pretty straightforward. And basically, um, there's a DOT a resolution that we will execute, and then we will do an electronic resolution within 30 days. And then as soon as they bless our award, we can have a pre-construction meeting and start the project. And the project locations are 5th Avenue, Locust Avenue, Maple Street, and 2nd Avenue as identified. I'll move on to uh, NJDOT Municipal Aid 2024 grant applications can be made. They are due by July 1st, 2023. And um, I guess we'll have a nice discussion about that. Mm -hmm. So I think we had distributed the colored map with some suggestions on it. Um, we had estimated some, it was in an earlier email from June 9th, uh, some costs. And it's essentially, you know, where do you, where do you want to go in at? If we typically list something for the 500 thousands, we ask for, you know, 90% of that money. And as we listed, um, even below our last year, we got $463,000. And uh, two years ago, we got the $330,000, which we just bid. So it's, it's a huge fluctuation there. But obviously, if you don't ask for it, you don't get it. So it's a risk reward type of thing. So I don't know if there's any preferences to this to the street location. So um, so we were just sort of speaking about that and trying to uh figure out different possibilities. Does everybody have the um, paper in front of them that they can see the different possibilities along with the map? Um, what is good is that there is relatively little red left on our, our map. And so these, these few possibilities are essentially almost what's pretty much left. Um, so I would like to, to start off the conversation um, with, uh, my priority and then we can all talk about everybody can sort of weigh in a little bit i wanted to make sure walnut avenue north to third was done um there's some good looking potholes over there um and it's just obviously that's one of our busiest streets uh so that was something i, I wanted to take top priority the rest, there are a couple different options that i would look at i think east street south to myrtle um I'm on there every day, obviously. I live right there, so I it's pretty cagey at this point. Um, so I, I would have put that in there as well. It really um, depends on how much the council wants to, to go for. Um, do we want to put a bunch in and see what kind of mu municipal aid we get um, and then scale back if we find that our costs are... You know, we obviously did talk about how next year we have a lot of capital items on the list that maybe we don't do as many streets, which I'm completely in favor of. Uh, but it's a matter of also we don't know what kind of municipal aid we we can get. We got a lot this year. Um, anybody thoughts? So I just have a question. I feel like we've had this conversation, Mr. Disco, which is. So if we do put in the uh, grant application for 580,000, which is what you, if we did all six streets, are we, is there an expectation that we should or will be doing those streets? Are we, is there yeah. any problem with scaling back is if, the question. If you list the streets in the application, you're committed to doing you it. Are committed. There is a okay. process by which you can, after the fact, uh, amend it, but then they may also then amend, amend the it. amount because okay. you're doing less. All right, so then we'll... I we'll think if to... you look, I mean, four of the last five years, three of the last four, excuse me, you got 380, 395, 463, 
330 was the one low year. So I think it's reasonable to expect, you know, around 400. Yeah. So I, maybe you don't go in at the 580, you know, and you go in at something like 480 to 500. I, I don't know. I'm just giving you some ballparks. Yeah. So um, in, in regards to, I mean, I 100% agree about Walnut Avenue. It's just a very, very um, heavily used road. Um, uh, so I, I mean, we were talking about West Street. So the West Street cost of 120. So is that obviously that would change given that the fact that yes. now there wouldn't be any pay. I'm pretty sure that 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 whole section. I don't, the only thing I'm not 100 percent sure is Myrtle to Myrtle Spruce. Spruce. Oh, thank okay, you. great. <laughs> yeah, if we can get that info, but I'm pretty I'm I'm pretty sure that whole stretch has been paved. So the only thing would be sidewalks. So do you know how much the sidewalks would cost, Mr. Harris? Do we or have, do we a, have a different grant uh, for that at this yes, point, right? Yes, uh, Councilman Lazaro, we have a um, bond ordinance from last year for the sidewalks there, as well as some CDBG grant money for the ADA access ramps at, I want to say it's Myrtle. Um, Mr. Disco is working up a cost estimate on that, and that's a project we'll have uh, ready to go out to bid in probably less than a month. Okay. So then if that's the case, then we could Eliminate. cross that off yeah. then. Yeah. Mayor, if, if I may, I, I was out for a walk in that neighborhood last night. Um most of West is done. It is. There, there's just this one block that we, none of us seem to know whether or not it, which means that it's probably not that think, bad a block between, if we're not sure. <laughs> I think between Willow and Spruce yeah. was done. That's Council where we had the drainage. Yeah, that's where the drainage issue is on yeah, the Spruce yes. there. So, so I think that, that was probably done by all the green. utility company, that one block. And between Myrtle and Spruce, yeah, because that's okay. where we have the drainage issue with the water. Yeah, and Russo did the just the did last week or the two weeks ago was between South and Willow. Okay, so the only possibility would be that last little stretch between. Uh, no, that would be the whole, the whole street there. Mm -hmm. So I, it was really only the intersection that looked like it had older pavement, but it was all smooth. Yeah. So then it looks like we can kind of cross that off our list and um, that helps make decisions a little bit easier. Um, I mean, so if we, we cross that out, that brings us down to 460 total um, without that West Street, which, you know, gets us into that pretty, I think, good place of if we can get 400 and only have to spend 60,000. That would be amazing. Obviously, we don't know for sure if we get that, but that would be fantastic. So we'll see. Um, uh, Councilman Lazar, the, these are just the cost estimates doesn't include our soft costs for these projects as well. So fair we enough. Should add about 15% for that. Okay. Yeah. Good I know. mean, I would like to target it a little lower. Um, as much as we say they could give us 400 if they see that the, the cost of the um, paving is only 460 they might come in at 300 like i i'm not really sure how they end up calculating how much they are giving us but well what percentage you said it was about 90 percent that we received this past year of our actual cost um, the, for the per 90, municipal aid well for the 2023 five it was 560,000 we requested and we got 463 yeah. okay so like probably 80 percent okay so, I mean, the other thing that I would, the only other thing I would say is because it's all yellow and um, maybe the second avenue mm -hmm. one would be the one that I would say that we could hold off on, given the fact that we do have a lot of other um, uh, capital requests and that would cut off another 135000 if we chose not to do it. That would be the other one that I would uh, consider removing from, from this municipal aid. Uh, I mean, I agree. I, I really wasn't focused on Second Avenue because it isn't, it isn't, you know, there's other spots that have a little bit uh, more wear to them. Um, so I, we have Walnut East. What about East and New? If we do that. Um, yeah, I kind of, the four I, I have marked off that are left are new east maple and walnut and they're all north to south connectors too and it just looks like uh, it's also just pieces of them too so it's like you go from nice paving to not so nice paving like you mentioned on east and it also happens on uh on maple on the south side where it goes from good to poor mm -hmm. um 
Uh, what is all that together? So it looks like it's 325,000. So, you know, that would put you in a pretty good position where we'd have to bond maybe 150, one, you know, 75 when it's all said and done. If we got, you know, say we get 200,000 from DOT with what I'm seeing coming down the road and what we pushed off from this year, we're going to have a significant department head capital. So that would probably be a safe bet. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Getting, getting this lower would be the way to go. Anybody else? Anybody else want to weigh in a little? I would just like to see us do Walnut and then south to on East Street, south to Myrtle. Like really kind of just slow down for a second because next year is supposed to be a lot. Like really cut back. It's just one year. Mm -hmm. Thoughts? I haven't. There's a couple of you I haven't heard from. Anybody else? Um, Mr. Disco is um is west between Beach and Pine. Is that I see some red? Is that west or maple? I'm looking at that. There's a little at red maple. Dot. It's like on that street. If you go down one where they've done the utility work, yeah. it it is pretty bad. Yeah, no, I, um, I was thinking of. And then the other side is fantastic. So. Uh, Mayor, there's a little a speck of red there that I think Councilman Carney's speaking of, just uh, north of Pine intersection. Yeah, I just like. Oh, I, on west. I'm yes. sorry. I'm. When I come back from the academy, I drive in on west, and there's like one kind of like rough patch there but um to what councilwoman salmon was saying if, if we want to take another one off that isn't in particularly bad shape i don't disagree with that either if there's a couple of things that uh, like mr harris mentioned that finance had to kind of push off this year yeah so i mean my thoughts as we as we're talking and i um, sort of getting everything together my thoughts were uh walnut new and east I agree with taking off. Obviously, we took off West. I'd take off Second Avenue. And I'm okay with taking off Maple for now um, because that is a bigger chunk of money um, with curbs and everything we would want to do. So that puts you at 210. If we get, you know, 80%, that would be a, a good spot to be. Would everybody be okay with that sort of a bit of a compromise? Yeah, I'm okay. I mean, I. I recognize our our challenging finance financial situation. It's very tempting, of course, to try to yeah. complete the map. It's just very fulfilling to get it all green, but you're we should. Um, <laughs> it but has it, been. I really and also just the fact that we, you know, it's also hard to like leave table, leave money on the table yeah. that the state is going to use to fund this. And that's my only reservation. But you know, given the fact that uh, you know, it's a, a percentage that we're going to get. And, you know, it sounds like we're going to have to bond for a decent amount, regardless if we do that. So I'm fine scaling back for the purposes of a, hopefully that we can. Councilwoman Nald, are you okay? With yeah, I'm scaling? okay with that. I, I, again, I would, I like Ms. Uh, Councilman Lazaro, I would prefer to do more, but I see the reason why we might need to pull back and do, do less. Councilman Graham, yep. and then I'll turn it over to Councilwoman hers if she has any comments. The, um, <laughs> My inclination was to do second only because I think there is a lot more traffic on there than than people suggest. But um, in 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 lieu of that, uh, you know, I I am on board with New East and, and Walnut at that amount. I believe we should cut back. And uh, you know, we're very very lucky we got yellow. Yellow was pretty darn good in a lot of areas of Garwood <laughs> just a few years ago. You know, because we had a lot of a lot of red. Well, with all the utility work, obviously we've taken advantage of that and it's it's turned out great. And with all these 22, 22 and 23 numbers on here, we're going to be in a real good shape yeah. very soon. So yes, we can we can slow our roll a little bit and just address those three for about 200,000. I think that's plenty of progress for a year. Councilwoman Salmon, you okay with that compromise? Okay, so it's about 210. Yes. Yep. Councilwoman Hers, did you want to weigh in at all? I'm in agreement of scaling back uh, to new east and west. That sounds okay. like a good compromise. Okay. New east and uh, walnut. 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 I know, we're, but we're, it's hard Sorry, when you're on I the phone. We're throwing well around a lot of street names. Yeah. And Mayor, if I could add, I um, think uh, over you know the next couple of years of the DOT grant, you will have everything green, which would be a, a good thing. And then you can slow, you know, 
start replacing street, you still continue to replace streets so you don't get into that situation where you have a lot of red right. and you're not forced to do, you know, where we were 500,000. You just got to do, you know, yeah, continual years ago. Yeah. You know, every yeah. year, maybe you're replacing just yellow streets so mm-hmm. they don't become red, right? Red and, you know, keep up I on agree. it at that point. So I, I think agree. that's it's it's a good approach that you have. Okay. And I'll just, All right, point, just oh. point out that New Street, we would be replacing the curbs. They're in pretty Correct. poor shape. The other two streets, we were not. I looked at those and they were in, I'll say, fair to good shape, the concrete curbs. Uh, it obviously costs more to put the curbs in, but you know, you're know, you not getting anything for it other than the aesthetic of it. Correct. And we, we've discussed that up here at a, a lot, that if if they were in poor shape, um, it's something I would consider, obviously, but if it's just for aesthetic reasons, it's hard to justify that cost. Everybody okay with that? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, Mr. Disco, have the marching orders, New Street, East Street, and Walnut. <laughs> Thank okay. you. And then just going down the list, I think the congressional grant, we were putting that funding in place, as I understood. Yes. And so we'll be able to put that to bid in near term. Uh, I processed final payment documentation for a municipal aid 21 project. That's what we paved in July of 2022 with Midwest. And uh, we are about 6,000 under contract for that. So some, some small savings. We've already started the field work for the municipal aid 23. That's the, anything denoted on, you know, the, the map there. Uh, we've got, we, we did our field work on Hemlock and we'll, we were out at Beach Avenue today and, and weather permitting tomorrow, but most likely next week on that. And then Myrtle. So um, we're we're going to obviously do the field work, takes a lot of time to do the drawings, and then we get it to DOT and we repeat the cycle with a, you know, winter or early spring bid uh, desirous. Okay. Uh, and if there's no questions on those, those are just factual. Uh, the South Avenue uh some time ago, we had met uh, regarding, you know, a pedestrian crossing on South Avenue by the de- redevelopment project. And then there was a discussion about the speed limit. Could we get the speed limit reduced on South Avenue? And the county indicated that um, they would be favorable if it was supported by council. And the first step that was recommended would be to get traffic counts and speed counts of South Avenue, and they did do that. Union County did that for us upon request. The data was from mid to late uh, May. And uh, I had the opportunity today to look at that data. And I was quite frankly shocked when I looked at the speed data that uh, it was not as high as I thought it would be. So in the traffic engineering and and enforcement world, you hear this term 85th percentile of speed. So what the reality of a speed limit that you set should be commiserate with what the 85th percentile speed is. And in this case, you have justification to request that the speed limit can be made 25 miles per hour on South Avenue from Center Street to West, or that's essentially where the speed data was taken. And I think that would be complementary then to, or more favorable to a mid-block or corner crossing, new crossing uh, with lights or whatever for the redevelopment projects. And you're certainly gonna have a lot more pedestrian activity in that area with the retail on the north side of South Avenue. So uh, the next step would be taking the data, I can formulate a, a draft letter if people wanna look at it to the county, formally requesting that they um, support our request to make it a 25 mile per hour speed limit and replace the signs as necessary. Is everybody uh, in agreement? Yeah, I mean, I think that this makes a lot of sense. Okay. So I would I would ask support that and okay. get that letter out. Yeah, I, I agree. The, I'm sure we're gonna see a lot more pedestrian movements as uh, the second building starts to fill in mm-hmm. and um, it's something we had discussed for a while before anyway, just uh, getting at 25 on either side of center would be, would be good. Okay. Yeah. We want to try and do whatever we can. The county indicated they had done this for Cranford, a similar process. And you can imagine South Avenue and downtown Cranford now, Mm -hmm. um, a lot of stoplights signals and a lot of 
restaurant use and pedestrian activity retail. So in terms of the the crosswalk, um, are we any closer? I know that they were ordering obviously the the equipment and I know that'll take a little bit, but I'm I'm less familiar with okay. the, the Russo aspect of okay. that I didn't stuff know other than you, the meeting or any... two I was in. So we'll see, Mr. Harris, if you could maybe email over and just get an update for yeah, the next so, meeting for yeah. that. Okay. That as well as the fire signal. Yes. The fire signals are waiting on us for some information. So once okay. we get that over to them. Once we get that, they'll put that in. Okay. Terrific. Does anybody have anything else from Mr. Disco? Uh, Mayor, if yes. I could just add to Mr. Disco's report regarding the congressional grant. Yes. Uh, myself and CFO Bruns met with our bond counselor uh, end of last week working to finalize that uh, bond ordinance. We'll have that up for the next meeting. Terrific. And, and you know, I'll be, be happy about that. It'll be adopted. The second meeting in July, and then we should be able to award the contract at the last meeting in August. Okay. Okay. Yeah, um, Mayor, um, just following up on the, the two points I raised uh, the last meeting, you were here, Mr. Disco. Um, the uh, left turn signal on to from south to center going south, and also the uh, depression in the pavement on third. Was it third? Third, yeah. I thought I saw, um, on the second matter, I thought I saw a picture that Clint had sent that they had done the work and did a repair for that. I believe I saw a picture on that. Okay, well, okay, good. Was, all right, they must I'm, have just done it. I, it was, I would say, it was about a last week, week ago. Yeah. I mean, about a week ago. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm going to check my uh, okay. email right now on that. All right, good. Because I, I go to the gym down there, but I hadn't gone for a week and a half. My back was tweaked. So it's possible they I, snuck in and did it. I guess I go twice a week, so I'm always over it. Yeah, I'm guesstimating it was about a week ago that okay. I saw an email and it was... Um, I went to the gym Tuesday. They did it Wednesday. Uh, <laughs> Councilman Graham, I believe this was done on June 6th. Good. And uh, so, or no, excuse me, that's um, might have been the request. Yeah, the request the was due, in. But I did see that it was do done. All right. Great. We'll, we'll figure out the, the exact date for you. And, yep. But good uh, to obviously, hear. Obviously, if it still moves, I mean, you know, I, well, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like I was um, responding because citizens were complaining. It was just something that I noted. Yep. And so I don't have anybody to get back to except. Yeah. You know, happy people. <laughs> Councilman Graham, I found the correct email. Uh, June 13th, the contractor confirmed the work was done. Perfect. Thank you. And the uh, the turn? So, yeah, I remember that. So the, the left turn, as I recall, the, the issue was that it, they're not isolated left turns. Was that the issue? Right. Well, okay. In other words, it wasn't a protected left turn. Yes. Okay, right. And the only thing, and again, if I was supposed to do something with that, I apologize. I, I theorize, and it's just that the volume of the east and west traffic is so much that they don't want to assign the left turning protected traffic because it just forces a delay on the straight east and westbound traffic. I think it may have something to do with the firehouse. Because well, if you don't want traffic backing up in front of the firehouse, uh, even though once the light turns green and people start to move. I, I think that piece will actually get solved by the fire signal that's okay. been circulating, but, um, but then I had, we would have to switch back. Well, the, the, the other piece of it is um, someone who uh, was visiting town for one of our grand openings who has some engineering experience pointed out to me that um, his opinion was that that arrow should come back. But uh, even if it was or wasn't there, that synchronizing the other lights going back to to Lincoln might alleviate some of the backup uh, or just the perception of this takes longer than it should. Mm. So I don't know if we could um, approach the county on that. We, or... we, we certainly can approach the county. There's no harm in that. I believe what I thought the discussion was that it was there at one time, perhaps, and the county yes, had then it was. moved yes. the opposite way That's and correct. eliminated it. So there probably was a I'll say traffic engineering purpose to it, which can be re reevaluated. 
we could even handle that in the same draft letter while you're doing the 25 months. That would speed be limit. great. Yeah, <laughs> could that's you that. potentially I, like look I at said, it? I have heard from many residents on that yeah. particular issue. So yeah. Yeah, okay. wrong time of day, you're going to sit being very frustrated, which only leads to somebody trying to go through on a yellow or a red. Yeah, anyway. that's true. Okay. okay. We'll we'll in, encapsulate that somehow in the okay. draft for the speed limit. Terrific. Anything else from Mr. Disco? Mr. Harris, anything to jump in on? Okay. Anybody have any more questions? Councilwoman Harris, any questions for Mr. Disco? No, thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Disco. Appreciate thank you very it. Much. I know we always keep you here a long time, but <laughs> it's very helpful. Um, okay, report from our borough attorney, Mr. Abramson. So there are two ordinances up tonight. One of them is 23-14. I believe the um Draft one that everyone saw had sections in it regarding um, the shade tree officer job description and duties. Uh, I did not include that in this ordinance. The reason being is last year, we took the stance that we're removing job descriptions from our code because that is something that should be done by our administrator so they can be updated as the job duties change over time. So the draft job duties and descriptions that were provided are going to be utilized by the borough administrator to create that job description. So the only revision um, in chapter five is regarding the one year term of the shade tree officer. Correct. Okay. All right. And the other section, there was um, the, other the other ordinance, which is regarding chapter 138. Um, the draft that was sent to me, the drafter was potentially deleting sections without the strike through and not realizing it or, or not using copy paste correctly. So I'm going to have to go back in and do a side-by-side -side comparison to make sure every word from the current code is actually there. Okay. And that will then be introduced at our next meeting. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? And one other thing, oh. there's a resolution on the consent agenda. What is this? Resolution 23-097, which is the adoption of the rules and regulations for the police department, just so everyone is aware and understands this. Um, it's the mayor's statutory right to create these. There's no requirement that the mayor needs council sign off. I'm the one who asked for a resolution to be put forward so that we actually have a record that there is new ones being issued. Otherwise, we would actually not have a proper record. So you're not actually agreeing to the rules and regulations. You're just confirming that there is a new set of rules and regulations. Um, Correct. Just yes. One, one question. Do we need to table that ordinance when it comes up or we're just not going to read it? The 23-14. No, that is just so that ordinance in front of you. Is, that that is, is going forward, okay. but it looks different than what you were originally saw as the draft. Okay, I'm so I'm explaining you. why it's like a page and a half shorter because it's cut out right. and it's now going to be put on a job description and kept in the administrator's office with the rest of the job description. All right, I got it now. Thank you. And then that other shade tree ordinance will be at the next meeting. That other big one that we. Okay talked about last time i know <laughs> that's confusing um any other questions okay thank you thank you mike okay mr harris report from our bar administrator i know you have a long one for us yes good evening mayor and council uh, resolution 23096 is awarding the contract for the resurfacing of parts of Fifth Avenue, Locust Avenue, Maple Street, and Second Avenue. The bids for this project came in under the cost estimate. Resolutions 23-98 through 23-101 are for the annual liquor license renewals. Uh, resolution 23-102 is an annual resolution that was missed at the reorg meeting appointing the Clean Communities Coordinator. 
Uh, resolution 23103 is to amend the previous uh, LOSAP approval resolution. Uh, the previous resolution had a firefighter that resigned was not included, but we found out we need to pay the firefighters LOSAP and then we will get it refunded to us. So that is why that is back on here. Uh, resolutions 23-104, 105, and 106. Uh, these are for the Department of Public Works purchase of a UTV. Uh, the UTV will have a snowplow and a salter. In April, the DPW demoed approximately five different UTVs and determined that this one best fit their needs. Uh, resolution 23-107 is for the security upgrades to Borough Hall, the recreation complex, and the firehouse. Uh, Chief Stouffer and I spent numerous hours reviewing the building security and finding a system that will best fit our needs and and needs of the borough and protect the borough's infrastructure and keep borough employees, volunteers, and the public safe. Resolution 23-110 adds the Union County grant money to our budget so that we can spend it. This is being used for the security upgrades and the electrical upgrades up to the DPW building. Uh, resolution 23-111, our court administrator is resigning. Judge Bundy and I have already started the process of hiring a new court administrator. The position has been posted and we hope to conduct interviews in mid-July. Resolution 23-112 is a purchasing of is a purchasing manual for the borough. I'm very excited about getting this out to all the department heads and volunteer committees. Uh, this has been a work in progress for the last six months, and it, it summarizes the local public contract laws with our purchase and our purchasing policies so that we can educate all of our uh, departments and volunteer groups that use, use uh, borough funding to make purchases. Resolutions 23-113 through 23-117 are all purchases for the fire department that were approved in uh, multi-purpose bond ordinances in 2022 and 2023. Uh, resolution 23-118 is for a climate-controlled shipping container that will provide the uh, storage for the police department. Uh, this will allow the police department to have more storage and discontinue use of their paid storage unit. Um, resolution 23-119 is to appoint myself and Janice Farrow as temporary co-rental property administrators. Uh, we've conducted interviews for this position and, at, and have been turned down by multiple candidates due to the salary. At this point, we will need to amend the salary ordinance for this position. I would like to have an ordinance at the next meeting increasing the salary range up to $72,000 so that we can hopefully fill this position. If there's any uh, objections to that, please let me know. Uh, my, go, continuing on here, uh, we have $112,500 in revenue in this year's budget from rental registration fees. Uh, it's, it's essential that myself and Ms. Farrell be put into this position so we can start to uh, send out bills and receive these registrations because if we do not take in that revenue, we're going to have a serious hole in the budget. So. Uh, this is very important that we get this going. We have over 475 rental properties with about 1,500 rental units. Uh, we budgeted $5,000 a month for this position starting in July. So the $2,750 stipend will be well under the budgeted amount for the, this. Resolution 23-120, uh, the council has that separate from their agenda packet. Did it make it onto the agenda? This is for the police department police truck that was originally bonded for in 2021 with additional funding provided in the 2023 multi-purpose bond ordinance. Uh, Chief Stouffer was able to find an in-stock truck, so we'll be able to have it in the truck here in a few weeks, as well as saving money before an expected price increase later this summer. Uh, Borough Attorney Aberson and I met with representatives of PSC and G and Tri-State Energy and Lightning last week. Uh, Expect to have a resolution on the first meeting in July approving the contract for the lighting and air conditioning upgrades that we spoke about at a previous meeting. These are the upgrades that are covered through operational savings and our energy bills. Uh, I also received a complaint regarding lighting at the corner of Will and West. I'm going to be going out there tonight after the meeting and evaluating, and I will notify the appropriate property owners or utility companies of anything that needs to be addressed. And finally tonight, I'd like to go over the ordinance changes that we've discussed previously, starting with the uh, parking ordinance. I believe everybody has those packets on, on the dais there. 
So the first one it's in bold, it says uh, parking ordinance amended 5, 26, 1998. Uh, the one change in here was uh, adding emergency firefighter parking along South Avenue. Uh, this would just be used for firefighters responding to a emergency call when there's no other readily available parking. On the next uh, ordinance, uh, municipal parking lots in bold at the top. Um, this is to include, uh, you'll see number five, that should be actually parking lot, not park lot. Uh, I'll correct that. This is to make a parking lot on the westerly side of the firehouse on South Avenue. And for this parking lot, and you'll see on page two, will be permit parking only 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This will allow for ample parking for both employees as well as the fire department. And also, uh, it, we need to reserve uh, four additional spots in the lot outside the municipal building for uh, employee parking as well, so that we would have parking for the majority of the employees that are here during the day. And that would be uh, from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. On the, the next ordinance that we've discussed in the uh, Community Engagement Committee is the fees for uh, parks and recreation. Um, on the second page there, you'll see uh, increasing the application fee to $30 with an additional $20 late fee for uh, applications for field rentals that come in with less than two weeks before the event. We've been seeing an, an increase in people trying to rent fields for the next day, and that's just unrealistic expectation for us to process those in that such a short time period. Uh, you'll also see a charge for lost key or FOB fee. You know, as we're doing these security upgrades, we'll be handing out FOBs. Um, it's $100 for a FOB that's not returned in within 72 hours of the event, and then also a late or uh, FOB rental uh, return fee of $25 for not returned in 24 hours. Just trying to, you know, we want to get these FOBs back so people don't have unlimited access to the buildings at all times. Uh, further down on that page, you'll see... Uh, the field rental fees increase for a three-year period, um, effective August 1st of this year, going up to 130 from the 125 that it's at right now. January 1st, a $10 increase, and then uh, January 1st, 2025, another $10 increase. This is for organizations. These are mostly for-profit organizations that are renting the field. Also, on the next page, you'll see some additional fees. Uh, for other events that take place, there's a water and electric fee for non-building use and non-field lighting. This is, you know, if there is an organization wants to set up a stage with, you know, using a lot of power um, or water amusements and stuff that are going to cost us additional money. We thought we should have a, a fee in, to offset those costs as well. Also, I put in here uh, staffing by a um, DPW employee for some of these bigger events that require electric hookups and water connections. Um, kind of went with some flat rates similar to like the police department does for road drives, but accounting for their collective bargaining agreements, you know, on our DPW on a Sunday is double time. So we wanted to make sure that the most expensive employee and all the payroll taxes are paid for and the borough is not incurring costs for a field rental. So you'll see that there. And then finally, um, in under the section recreation fees, um, we have some different fees here, a rec uh, registration fee of three dollars to offset the administrative costs for anybody use utilizing a recreation program. Uh, late recreation registration fees uh, ten dollars for within two weeks prior to class. We have a big put everybody waits to the last minute and it's really difficult on our rec director or instructors that to prepare for these classes. Like a lot of the times the classes require purchasing materials and they're not going to purchase materials for 20 people if only five are signed up. But then the day before 
15 sign up. So it's just trying to encourage people to sign up early. Um, we have our camp registration at 25. Like this one is one we really need to plan in advance. So we have a $25 late fee for within 30 days of the first day of camp and an additional 25 within seven days. Um, once again, it's, you know, we're ordering, you know, setting up with vendors, you know, they got to, our vendors need to be scheduled well in advance. Uh, you know, t-shirts for the campers. We're, we just want to be prepared and really encourage residents to sign up early because it just makes the planning for our staff so much easier. Uh, we have a non-electronic registration processing fee. That's simply, it's, you know, we've implemented the MyRec program. It's, it saves our staff a lot of time, but we do have some residents that choose to uh, register the old fashioned way. And that, that costs us time. It, you know, probably it's probably about a half hour's worth of work for a, a non uh, electronic registration. So we want to include that uh, a basic ten dollar fee for non resident uh, registration fees, cancellation fee of ten dollars. Uh, anybody that cancels a program, we've run into that issue where people are double and triple booking themselves and then um, canceling, and it's not just like. You call and you cancel and you get your, your credit card refund. Council has to approve any money we, we spend. So we have to do a purchase order with them. They need to, you know, fill out paperwork. We then have to put it on a bills list. There's there's a great deal of work that goes into refunding uh residents. So that's explanation of those fees there. On to the next one that's laid uh in bold, just fees at the top. Uh this is for road opening permits. Uh, Superintendent Dixon and the Streets Committee uh, reviewed uh, fees from several different municipalities. You know, it, our fee structure doesn't exactly match up what Westfield does or Cranford does or any of the surrounding towns. So we kind of like had to average things out and look to what would be, you know, best fits our uh, our existing ordinance and how we, you know, we do operate here. So we're just increasing the, you know, we want to be more uh, on par with the surrounding communities. Uh, we really increased the non-reported opening fee. This is uh, this is when a company comes in and just opens up a street and doesn't follow the procedure. So we want to, you know, we want to hit them hard for that. Um, you know, just general increases that were more comparable to the other surrounding towns um, all the way through. And then finally, the last page, uh, doing application for mer permit. So we've ran into some issues with, you know, some people or getting, getting a permit a year before the work occurs. And then the road gets resurfaced in that time period. And now we suddenly have a big hole because the road, you know, the initial uh, application was approved and all they had to do, there wasn't under moratorium. Now it is under moratorium. So this is like, we know what's going to be paved within 60 days. We don't know what's going to be paid the year from now. So, this is just to push projects through a little bit more quickly. And if there's no uh, objections, I'd like to have all those for introduction at the first meeting in July with uh, potential adoption in the second meeting in July. It'll be a long meeting. <laughs> and that concludes my report tonight. A lot of information. Okay, I'll open this up uh, to the council yeah, for questions. I have a quick question, uh, Mr. Harris. On the, uh, the FOBs, um, the security system, does that have a date stamp? Because these FOBs are intelligent, aren't they? Couldn't they be programmed to access on a specific day for a specific amount of time and then be basically inactive after that? Yes. So I think rather than, you know, us worrying about a FOB floating out there. Oh, I know. wouldn't be concerned about a FOB. I'd have to turn the FOB off, which is not a big deal. But we also, we buy we, the we, we buy the FOB. We, buy, so. we need to buy the FOB. So I don't want to be okay. Well, that, that was that was that was my question that that it's not just it's an active FOB, like giving somebody <laughs> a key and they don't return it. It's programmed and it won't work. It's programmed, it, but there's there's time involved with deprogramming it. So it's we our system is not going to be every uh, FOB location is not hardwired in. Oh. So it for me to because um, it's just significantly more expensive to do it that way so if somebody were to lose a fob i would deactivate it i would then use my fob swipe a wired wired reader which will have several of them then i would have to say if it was for the rec center i'd have to go out to the rec center 
Bob, you know, swipe in three or four there and they would update those. So it's not, it's not, you know, the, the cost of the fob is under $10, but there's also, you know, there's the, the time of having to drive over, do, you know, do right. this. Right. We want, you know, we want residents to turn them back in. So I don't have to deactivate it because then we'll have it available for the next resident and organization that's running a field. Right. You know, we're going to have, you know, these are very smart fobs. So for example, at the rec center, there's going to be a fob to enter the building so you can get to the restroom area there'll be there's a a door swipe going into the kitchen that would only be you know the little league would have access people that are required use of the kitchen but not the per not the person that's running the soccer field they won't be able to get into that door and then there'll be one going into the rec room in the back so if you're just running the field you only have access to the restrooms you do, you can't get into the rest of the building right yeah so that that was my only concern was that you know, the FOB would still be active after the date of use. So no, that's it. We'll keep them active. And then if somebody loses it, we turn it off. Okay. Thank you. Or it doesn't turn it in. Correct. Doesn't turn it in or loses it. We will then charge them their security deposit. And uh, any other council members with questions up here? And then I'll... Councilwoman Hers, is there any questions you have for Mr. Harris? No, thank you. Okay, Mr. Harris, I just have one for you in terms of the municipal, I, we call it the municipal parking lot, right? It's the central business district parking plaza on the parking ordinance. So we're changing some of the stalls around, um, which is part of sort of our bigger parking plan now that we have the the lot next to the firehouse. Um, and we're, you know, trying to make sure we have some employee parking to free up the street parking. Um, and I know there's a bigger discussion on meters and everything, but I wanted to um, just concentrate on that lot for a second. We are amending to add employee parking or no. Yeah, I guess essentially it would be in, uh, yeah, borough staff parking for four stalls up from one. Um, and then there we have two 15 minute parking stalls already. And then uh, mayor, if I, yes. I know the uh, police committee, we're meeting next week to kind of dive into a little bit more of the parking issues. Okay. Um, you know, it's terms of where we're going to have paid parking out there and, you know, municipal visitor parking. Vis so my question was the visitor parking. Yes. So that so we're going to, that'll be a uh, further discussion. Yes. On that. There's okay. going to be an, Hopefully, you know, we'll have a, a productive meeting um, next week. We'll talk about it on the meeting uh, the 13th, I think it is. And then we can get that one ready for introduction as well. Okay. And okay. So that should address uh, my question in terms of how many stalls for visitor out there. And then yeah, we're if this kind of thinking at least three stalls for visitors to uh, Borough Hall. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate Just it. Just my two cents. I think four spots for employee parking out there is a lot. Um, I, I, I would like the police committee to, to discuss it because I, I've kind of looked at the numbers and we, I, you know, I have a, uh, some information from Mr. Harris that I know the police committee will be looking at. And I guess the, the point was to try and free up some, um, space on the streets because as of now, there because of the construction parking in the King's parking lot, but that's not a um, permanent solution. They were just offering that to us while construction was going on. So at some point they're not going to be there. Um, and so it, it becomes the, okay, where do we park? So even um, with those four spots there, we still don't have enough parking for employees. That was something I wanted to speak with the police committee next week, maybe, uh, a lot on I think it's lot two that's on Willow and Center. Maybe we maybe we move all the park employee parking over there, but we definitely we need a place for employees to park. It's 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 an issue for sure. Right. Um and I and I don't think it's about being right in front or anything like that. It's just having a spot. And I know there's a lot more going on with the parking um scenario that I know Mr. Harris and I have discussed in terms of um marking spots on willow for employee like local business employee parking and everything so i think there's going to be a lot that comes out of the police committee discussion next week so um i think we'll wait and see what that turns up and then we can discuss yeah because we need to you know 
there is the, the lot next to the fire department, but we do need to keep half of that lot available for our fire, for fire. uh fires right. during daytime responses. So it's just we got to, you know, and then some we have police. a limited number of yeah. parking and our yeah, you know sure. our staffing here is you know work we're, we're not we have three open positions right now. So once those fill, we're gonna have an issue. Yeah. Yeah, this it, it, there's never going to be enough parking. Well, obviously, we're we're like many other communities. There's we're going to be stuck for that, but um, we'll see what committee comes up with, um, and then we can discuss and and go further from there. Good. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Um, my report. Okay. Um, well, first, I want to begin by congratulating all of our graduating Lincoln School eighth graders. Uh, I was able to give my commendations to them at the ceremony on Monday night, and it was just a lovely evening. The students did a wonderful job, uh, and I applaud Superintendent Kinney and Mrs. Emmons and all the teachers who organized the ceremony. I don't think there was a dry eye in the house. They did this lovely thing where the kids gave flowers to a special person in their life, and it was just... Oh, we were all crying. So, <laughs> and a congratulations also to Garwood's graduating high school seniors. Uh, ALJ's graduation is tonight. So unfortunately I couldn't attend uh, due to our meeting, but I wish them lots of luck as well. Uh, and as well as our seniors at the Magnet Vote Tech and other high schools in the area. Uh, also, a happy Pride Month. I am committed to making sure Garwood is a community of inclusion and acceptance. So I celebrate along with you and want all of our residents to know we are a welcoming community where we embrace everyone and honor our differences. And I am proud to announce that Garwood will be joining the other communities in Union County and participating in the National Safe Place Program. This is a program designed to foster relationships with the police and the residents to ensure everyone feels safe in reporting bias and hate crimes. Uh, businesses in town can volunteer to put a safe place sticker in their window and any victim of a bias or hate crime can know that they have a safe place within that business to report the crime and get assistance in calling the police. This has been hugely successful uh, in areas around the country, and Union County is the only county with every municipality participating, so we're pretty special in that. On July 5th, we will be kickstarting the program off at 11 a.m. at the Garwood Plaza on North Avenue. Uh, that's the one with the um, Dunkin' Donuts. And we will also be joined by Union County Prosecutor, the Union County Prosecutor to highlight the importance of this program. I want to thank Lieutenant Rocco for all of his work to get Garwood certified in this program and organizing the logistics. I know he's been working for many months to see this off the ground, so I appreciate all of that work. And I look forward to reporting back to everyone on the kickoff. We also had several grand openings this past weekend, the most we've ever had in one month, let alone one day, let alone one day. Um, there were ribbon cuttings at Atlas Chiropractic just next door to Burrow Hall the Cozy Corner Cuban Bistro across the street, the V Spa next door to that, and the Jersey Garbage Can Cleaners, a mobile truck can cleaning service as well. So it was really encouraging to see all these small businesses opening to the public and doing so well. Um, and I love seeing all the pedestrian traffic we're now seeing along these the, the center of the downtown, uh, and these new businesses are really going to benefit. Uh, and so I encourage everyone to shop local, of course. Uh, so switching gears, um, I know it's been on everyone's mind, all of the news about the car thefts in the area and even some of the home burglaries with perpetrators looking for car fobs happening in towns close to us. Uh, it's obviously something that's not acceptable and it worries me greatly. Garwood hasn't been unscathed, but we haven't been hit as hard as our neighbors, thankfully. Uh, however, this doesn't mean that this is not a priority for our police department or for myself. Um, I have been coordinating with a group of bipartisan mayors to advocate for change so that our police departments and prosecutors can retain and charge repeat offenders. Um, and it does look like our state legislators are listening. The Senate Assembly have just passed bills to expand penalties related to the illegal use of a master key or what we call the, the key fob. 
Um, they've expanded the definition of who is considered a leader of an auto theft trafficking network to now include recruiters and traffical, traffickers who only deal in stolen parts. And they're establishing separate statutory provisions for existing crimes of theft of a motor vehicle. Uh, these bills basically essentially give higher degree offenses to these particular crimes, which I believe will aid our police and prosecutors. Uh, there's still a bill pending that would specifically look at repeat offenders. Now, I want to be clear. Um, I want my beliefs and my intentions to be clear. Bail reform was and still is, in my opinion, law that was sorely needed to correct social injustices and in incarceration. And here in New Jersey, the data is showing it works. I know there's been issues with New York and how they are um, implementing it. They do it a little differently. But here in New Jersey, the data does show it, it works with violent crimes. However, the like many of the bipartisan senators and assemblymen who voted to pass these recent bills, I believe there were some unintended consequences of this law and amendments are necessary to correct those. So I'm not advocating for rolling back the reform, but to adjust it and with these particular amendments. So we all want to feel safe in our homes, and I'm hopeful that these new measures can help address some of the recent activities we're seeing. Now, following along the lines of public safety, uh, I wanted to address something else, and that's pedestrian safety and traffic enforcement on our Garwood streets. The warm weather is here, and as I said earlier, we're, we're seeing a lot of pedestrian traffic with the new businesses as well as school having just ended this week. So I know this is also on everyone's mind. Um, and as I've spoken about before, traffic enforcement is an important priority for both myself and Chief Stouffer. Uh, Chief Stouffer has been closely communicating with me about all the different measures he's undertaking and will be undertaking to curb some of the speeding and protect pedestrians. Uh, it's obviously an ongoing challenge, but I asked the chief to speak to it a bit tonight so you can hear directly from him. Uh, chief? Not trying to do the best of the world, uh, it's not hard. Just trying to get back to basics with our enforcement. You you might need to hold it because you're a little taller. <laughs> um, so I'm just getting back to the basics. The main thing being is just being out, being visible, being the first step. In addition to that, we've been increasing our targeted patrols um, and fixed track posts, such as radar, in a lot of the problem areas that we all know they are. Um, in addition to that, right now we have still have quite a few people still in training, but as soon as we get them out and assigned to the squads, just redeploying our manpower. A uh, big part of this is trying to be consistent. So trying to make sure that we're out really hitting it hard on the daily. And uh, within a couple of weeks, we should really be able to hit the ground running with that. Um, we started implementing foot patrols also, which not only for community policing, but also to target pedestrian safety face-to-face. -face. You know, uh, especially like downtown here, out on foot, people are walking against the green or whatever, you can talk to them right there. Not so much to get summons or anything, but just say, hey, you know, just wait for the, wait for the crossing and stuff like that. Um, again, the consistency is going to be key. And uh, once we have a little bit more of our puzzle pieces in place, that will be one of the main things that we're, we're targeting and making sure that we do on the regular. Um, the traffic coming also, you know, I understand uh, everybody wants to do speed bumps and speed bumps and other things like that. There are other options that we'll be exploring, one of which I'll be bringing back are the delineators. A lot of areas in town, some of the delineators in the center of the streets are just slow people down. They'll slow down so they don't hit them <laughs> most times. But, you know, it's a uh, relatively inexpensive solution and it's you can move them easily so it's not just the long term especially if the speed is increased and then finally uh, trying to use as much data as we can from speed signs and speed trailers just to get good data so we can tailor our patrols so that we're getting best bang for our buck down the street down the line uh, so those are just a few things that we're going for and now um, hopefully no more motor vehicle stops, more tickets, and get jobs back to our home also. Keep you posted. Hopefully, keep on the right trajectory. 
Thank you, Chief. I, I think we are on the right trajectory. And obviously, it's always an ongoing challenge. Um, and getting everybody to take personal responsibility as well, you know, not look on your phone as you're crossing. I mean, listen, we're all we've all probably done it when we shouldn't be doing it. But um, it, it's it's a big part of it, taking personal responsibility in your car when you're walking. Um, but I, I know we've spoken a lot about heavy intersections, you know, that are consistently, you know, you see speeders, 4th Avenue, Spruce and, and West uh, on Oak uh, and Spruce. And so I, I know um, Chief Stouffer is aware of those and putting those sort of spots into rotation uh, as, as spots that he'll be having his officers at and, and checking in on the speeders. Um, does anybody have any questions for Chief Stouffer? Thank you, Chief. I appreciate it. Um, okay, so uh, just a little bit more. I have an update on redevelopment. Um, last week, paperboard redevelopers were sent notice of default together with new timelines for any further remediation as well as building permits based on our previous meeting. We are awaiting the response and I will update everyone at that point. Uh, residential at Vermella 1 is essentially fully occupied at 99.3%, um, and Vermella 2 is 27% leased. They are targeting the first move-ins to begin July 1st. The fountain at Vermella 1 is undergoing some repairs. You might have seen that um, on the first few days they, they had it up, but it will be off while they're working out the kinks. Um, on the retail end, they have the Acai Bowl Cafe under contract and fit out work is starting next week. Uh, PJ's Coffee has the lease drafted and they're just awaiting corporate approval. Uh, and they are also negotiating with a physical therapy tenant. Uh, now, if you notice on our agenda, there is an introduction to amend the redevelopment plan to allow for a pharmacy with limitations on square footage of no more than 3,000 square feet. Uh, this is something we've had extensive discussions on beginning back on April 13th after it was recommended to us by the planning board and when Mr. Minx came to our meeting. And then again last month when he returned with further information. Now, this is only an introduction. Uh, should it pass introduction, it will have to be sent back to the planning board. And then seeing no changes, it would come back to us for adoption. Uh, where we would, of course, as council discuss it and discuss it, and there would also be a public hearing uh, where the public would be able to comment on, on it as well. Um, but before we move on to the intro, because I know there was a lot of information to digest from the last meeting with Mr. Minx, I'd just like to open it up now to council members for any discussion they wish to have on it. I mean, we don't have to, too. If we're if we're talked out, we don't have to as well. So, Mayor, I'm just going to reserve because it's going to come before planning anyway. And I know we can't vote there, but we can certainly partake in the discussion there. And I kind of want to I want to hear the planning board again. We've kind of covered this topic extensively. OK. Anybody else reserving it for? Next time, Councilwoman Hers, is there anything you wanted to talk about? I'll reserve a uh, comment until it comes back. Okay. Okay. Okay, then. Sounds good to me. Um, and that is actually all I have. I think that's enough, right? Um, <laughs> any uh, council comments from Councilwoman Hers? Thanks, Mayor. Um, I'd just like to second your sentiments in congratulating the Lincoln School eighth grade students and uh, wish them all the best as they transition to their high school of choice. That's all. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Carney. Uh, thank you, Mayor. A few things for me tonight. Uh, I've been in a dialogue with Senator Bramnick's staff discussing the energy tax receipts issue we both spoke about uh, in our comments at the last meeting. I also followed up on a letter that Senator Bramnick sent to me, and I'm assuming uh, each council member here and uh, all across LD21. Uh, it was regarding proposed legislation by Senators O'Scanlan and Testa uh, that he is now co-sponsoring to assist local governments with debt relief. Uh, that bill number is S3906 for anyone keeping score at home. Um, 
while I do agree addressing short and long-term debt service and capital planning at the local level is a worthwhile discussion uh, to have with the legislature, this specific bill has a few issues. Um, number one, it sets the state up in the role of the gatekeeper to accessing the relief funds, which is a huge part of the problem with the current energy tax setup. Uh, it has per capita restrictions, which would likely disadvantage smaller towns like ours uh, for equitable funding. And uh, third, it places significant emphasis on the avoidance of debt, uh, which is a laudable goal, but it doesn't do anything to address the immediate budgetary issues most towns have been struggling with, uh, or the inability of many towns to fund large capital purchases from operating funds instead of bonds without raising taxes by a corresponding level all in one fiscal year. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, continued discussion on this particular bill with the uh, Senator. I was promised to call back. Hmm. Uh, I hope uh, other electeds are also engaging with their representatives uh, because this is the time right now to do it. As I mentioned in the last meeting, the state budget meetings are going on right now. So um, my bottom line hasn't changed on this from last meeting. Um, I believe the best way to control property taxes, including municipal debt, would be returning the energy tax receipts to local governments that could then anticipate that revenue directly into our operating budgets each year. Uh, in the short term, this would allow us to hold taxes in check. Uh, and after several years, we would be able to fund larger needed purchases without always needing to bond for them, what seems almost like default most years. Uh, I'm hopeful that constructive feedback from mayors and council members across our legislative district to Senator Bramnick, who was open to this conversation, uh, will move the whole issue forward in a better way for local government. But uh, it is promising that the legislature is really spending a lot of time on this issue this year uh, of the overall affordability of living in New Jersey. And uh, finally, I know I'm often a critic of Trenton when I uh, comment here, uh, but I do want to extend thanks to our entire legislature for the quick movement and passage of the legislation the mayor referenced in her report, uh, which is designed to directly address the issue of increasing vehicle thefts all across New Jersey. Uh, I'm very happy with the creation of a new criminal statute specific to the theft of a motor vehicle, along with the enhanced degree of penalties possible under it. Uh, this is something with, which I've heard discussed throughout my entire career in law enforcement, uh, and I'm glad to finally see it happen. And uh, also, Mayor, just I fully support uh, your comments regarding bail reform. And uh, that's all for me. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, yes, and again, encourage everyone to call your legislature about energy tax receipts. Can't stress that enough. Um, okay, uh, Councilman Lazaro. I'll, I'll just, of course, um, echo and support Councilman Kearney's uh, comments and sentiments on, you know, all of us, um, you know, pushing for energy tax reforms. It's a well-needed reform, um, given the fact that essentially our CFO gave us information that indicated that Garwood specifically it was owed somewhere in the range of six hundred thousand uh, dollars over the last several years, which would have significantly changed our budget um, this year and years to come. So yes, it's a very, very important issue. It's one that I'm hoping that we can see some progress and, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what that progress is. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Noldi. No comments. Councilwoman Salmon. No comments for me, Mayor. Council President Graham. Well, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to add my congratulations to the eighth grade class and, and all our students, uh, ALJ or the Magnet School on their graduations. Uh, you know, thinking back, um, my years of being a substitute, I know some of those kids have now graduated high school. Yeah. So it's it's kind of cool. Um, and uh, as was mentioned, you know, quite quite frequently, the police committee is meeting next Wednesday to go over the parking situation, and we hope to have a um, substantial amount of work and resolution toward that end. It's been ongoing, so it's high time we get this done. And um, and welcome to all those new businesses. It was a lot of fun going to all those openings. Um, you know, it's just a, a it was a cool day for Garwood that Saturday, and I really appreciate these businesses being a part of this vibrant community and uh, making our downtown 
quite meaningful and welcoming. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. I'm looking forward to your parking, com your police committee discussion on parking, particularly parking meters. I know we we have a lot to discuss on that. So um, moving on to the minutes, uh, Mr. Harris. <laughs> Uh, minutes of the regular meeting of the mayor and council held on June 8th, 2023. Can I have a motion to accept the minutes as presented? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Sorry, <clears throat> we just have a lot of papers up here tonight. <laughs> Okay, communications, Mr. Harris. Uh, New Jersey State League of Municipalities. Received and filed. Uh, moving on to ordinances. We have uh, two ordinances up for introduction tonight. Uh, Mr. Harris, can you read ordinance number 23-13 by title only? Ordinance of the Borough Council of the Borough of Garwood, County of Union, New Jersey, amending the South Avenue Transit-Oriented Redevelopment Plan pursuant to the Local Redevelopment and Housing Law, NJSA 4812A-1, uh, exec. Can I have a motion to introduce this ordinance? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, roll call, please, Mr. Harris. Councilwoman Hers. Nay. Councilman Carney. Aye. Councilman Lazaro? Aye. Councilwoman Nolte? Aye. Councilwoman Salmon? No. Council President Graham? Aye. Okay, that is four to two. So it um, moves along to, and at this point, that would go to the planning board, correct, Mr. Harris? Yes, we'll okay. get that set over. Okay, Ms. Uh, Mr. Harris, can you read ordinance number 23-14 by title only? And it, an ordinance amending the borough co code of the borough of Garwood by amending chapter five entitled administration, article 8A, other offices and positions, section 5-51.3, appointment of shade tree officer. Can I have a motion to introduce ordinance 23-14? So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> Uh, roll call, please. Councilwoman Hers. Aye. Councilman Carney. Aye. Councilman Lazaro. Aye. Councilwoman Nolte. Aye. Councilwoman Salmon. Aye. Council President Graham. Aye. Okay, thank you. Moving on to Council Standing Committee reports, finance and personnel. Councilman Lazaro. No report. Okay, fire and OEM, Councilman Carney. No report. Okay. Facilities, grounds, and shade trees, Councilwoman Hers. No report. Okay, streets, ecology, and sustainability, Councilwoman Salmon. Thank you, Mayor. Along with our DPW's regular daily services, our DPW has cleared debris from the tops of all drainage inlets on the north and south side of the borough to prepare for the forecasted rain installed new signage and repainted signposts in various locations throughout the borough, performed shade tree removal and pruning in various locations, including but not limited to 2nd Avenue, 3rd Avenue, Oak Street, and Willow Avenue. They have also continued performing their regular, regularly scheduled street sweeping operations in accordance with their annual public works schedule. The DPW is finishing out this week by doing a complete cleanup at the recreation complex in preparation for the start of summer rec camp on Monday. And that is all for my report. Thank you, Councilwoman. Police and Public Safety, Council President Graham. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Since the last meeting on June 8th, the Guard Police Department has recorded the following activity. Initiated 60 motor vehicle stops, addressed 23 parking complaints, assigned to 56 tra fixed traffic posts consisting of radar, stop sign, and distracted driving, conducted 110 building slash property checks, responded to 14 medical assists, conducted 30 community policing posts, conducted 15 walking posts, initiated 11 criminal investigations, and recorded 348 other miscellaneous service calls. Very busy couple of weeks, Chief. Uh, keep up the good work. The Garwood Police Department would like to recognize Patrolman Eric Schoenberger, who is currently attending his final annual training 
with his United States Marine Corps Reserve, Reserve Unit. He is at 29 Palms, located in California, conducting a live fire training exercise in the desert. After completion of this training, Patrolman Schoenberger will have officially completed his six-year commitment to serving his country. Thank you for your service, Patrolman. With the 4th of July right around the corner, the Garwood Police Department would like to remind residents that most fireworks, such as firecrackers, bottle rockets, Roman candles, and other aerial devices are illegal. Their small, non-aerial sparkling, uh, sparkling devices and novelties, which are sold at supermarkets, convenience stores, and other retail outlets in New Jersey, which are legal, but can still be dangerous. Here are some tips to follow. Only buy from reputable outlets. Don't buy if the packing, packaging is damaged or appears tampered with. Don't use or try to fix broken or dud devices. When non-aerial sparking devices may, while non-aerial sparking devices may be legal, they can still burn you. Temperatures of one sparkler can reach about 1200 degrees Fahrenheit and are not intended for children. Never use these devices indoors. Always have water handy and follow the manufacturer's instructions. Wait 20 minutes for, for, to properly dispose of these devices. Thanks for that too, Chief. That's my report. Thank you, Council President. Good, Chief. Good tips. Um, community engagement, Council Councilwoman Noldi. Uh, so for recreation, there are now 194 children signed up uh, for the summer program. Uh, registrations will continue until the program begins next week. Uh, for celebrations, we have received the resignation of the chair of the committee effective June 30th. Um, I would like to thank. Uh, Jennifer Guerrero for dedicating her time and vision to this committee over the last four years. Our time uh, celebrations have been richer due to her involvement, so we do thank her. I would also like to encourage um, anyone who is interested in participating in the planning and preparation of our townwide celebrations to please uh, let us know. We, were, we are definitely interested in, in recruiting some new members. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Library Mayor's Representative, Councilman Lazara. Thank you, Mayor. Some of the upcoming events at the library include June 28th at 2.30, the Summer Reading Opening Party. Join the library for a summer reading kickoff event in the library parking lot with giveaways, ice cream from the screen truck, and an obstacle course. This event is open to those who are registered for summer reading. Registration is required. On June 29th at 1.30, there will be a magic show. Join Muscle Man Mike for nonstop magic. Registration is required, and there's a limit of 30. On July 11th at 2 p.m., there will be a program called Lee's Circus Extravaganza. Enjoy a fun and interactive juggling extravaganza. Uh, plates will spin and unicycles will, uh, there'll be a jump rope with unicycles. Registration is required, limit of 30. On July 12th at 2 p.m., there's a program called Garden Together Now. Help beautify the garden by the library sign, paint rocks and plant flowers. Bring your gardening gloves and a small shovel. Registration is required in limit of 12. On July 13th, 20th, and 27th at 2 p.m., there's a program called Art Together Now. Garwood Library, in collaboration with One River Art School, presents art classes. Learn how to draw, sculpt, and create cool designs. This is for children entering third grade and up. Registration is required. Limit of 15. Um, the library hours um, are changing, so uh, just be aware that starting in July, Saturday, and Sundays, uh, that they will be closed in, in those months. And in addition, the library will be closed on Tuesday to July 4th for Independence Day. That's all for my report. Thank you, Councilman. School Board Liaison, Councilwoman Noldy. The Board of Education met on June 13th. Uh, no report. Uh, the next regular meeting of the Board of Education is August 15th. Thank you. I have the senior citizen uh, report. We had the pleasure of having a presentation by the Union County Savings Bank at our last meeting. They spoke to the club not only about their office offerings at the bank, but about password protection and hacking. So we thank them for the engaging conversation and look forward to our next meeting on July 6th at 12 p.m. at the Knights of Columbus. Uh, Small Business Advisory Liaison, Councilman Carney. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And beginning with a big welcome to Garwood for our record-breaking four businesses in one day, uh, which hosted grand openings in town over the past weekend. Uh, Atlas, Atlas Chiropractic, a Cozy Corner Cuban Bistro, and the V-Spa, which are all within shouting distance of where we're sitting. 
and the uh, Jersey Garbage Can Cleaning Service, which is a mobile business serving our entire area. Uh, onto the Small Business Advisory Board, we met virtually on uh, last Tuesday, June 13th. We had a great discussion on the taste of Garwood, which we will be following up on by inviting all of the participating businesses into a separate meeting over the summer for further discussion and to take recommendations on them for uh, how to run the promotion next year. Uh, we also spent a lot of time discussing an idea that had come up earlier this year, uh, and this is at the suggestion of several of our board members uh, that I strongly agree with, uh, the formation of a small business association for the borough of Garwood. So the concept will be an extension and an expansion of the current advisory board, which I think, uh, going back to my discussions with former Mayor Tedisco when we were setting this up in 2021, uh, the goal was to eventually make it make it bigger and more encompassing. And um, with the level of interest we've had this year, and you know, with the dedication of the current board members, I think I think we're there. Um, the uh, so the goal for this association would be to create two way communications between the borough, the mayor and council and uh, all of our businesses who would be able to join for free. Uh, we do have several additional local businesses interested in getting this concept off the ground. Uh, and they're going to help the existing board members with door to door outreach. Uh, the board will also be organizing a fall meet and greet with the mayor, uh, since they received a lot of good feedback on the last one. Uh, but this one would have the uh, coinciding goal of launching the small business association as well. Uh, I'm going to be assisting the board with this project over the summer, and I'll be discussing with uh, both Mr. Harris and the mayor, uh, whatever processes we need to follow on the council for resolutions or appointments or whatever we need to do to uh, make it all work right. Uh, the board is also still looking at the wellness week concept. I have a, uh, a follow up call scheduled with one of the board members uh, to try and work out the specifics of uh, how and what time of year we're going to do that. And uh, we uh, we want to include several of the new businesses that recently opened because uh, they all have wellness uh, applications. Uh, and finally, the board members uh, discussed several concerns from within the group uh, relative to parts of the borough code, which deal with the hours of operation for restaurants and advertising signage for all businesses. Uh, I was able to assist the board by providing section numbers in the code for them to uh, read over, research, and uh, provide recommendations. Uh, spoiler alert, most of it falls under land use. Uh, which I advised everybody who was on the call with me would require uh, additional presentations to the planning board, as well as the mayor and council. So uh, I made clear that it's not exactly uh, an easy lift, but if there's uh, something that comes out of those discussions that that's worthwhile and the board members are willing to bring it forth, uh, I'll certainly uh, support them in that. Um, once they have a firm proposal on exactly what they're looking to do and where, uh, I'll pass it along to Mr. Harris. We can get it distributed to the council and start the process. And uh, that's all for my report. Okay, not going on. I appreciate that. Looking forward to these discussions. Uh, Board of Health Liaison, Councilwoman Hurst. I have no report other than to um, state that the next Board of Health meeting is September 20th. Thank you. Thank you. Planning Board Liaison, Councilman Carney. Uh, thank you, Mayor. The planning board will be meeting as scheduled this upcoming Wednesday, June 28th. Uh, there are now two applications on. One is seeking relief for a setback on Hazel Avenue, and the second is seeking a use variance on 2nd Avenue. Uh, I also expect the board will have discussion on the referral of the uh, redevelopment ordinance that was just introduced, and uh, that's all for this report. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on, uh, Mr. Harris, I see we don't have any officers reports, correct? That is correct, ma'am. Okay, so we will move right on to public comment. If there's anyone in the audience who wishes to address the mayor council, please step to the microphone and state your full name and address, and please limit your comments to five minutes. I like your shirt, Mr. Pritchard. <laughs> Johnny Pritchard, 410 Spruce Avenue, Garwood. We must back our police officers and firefighters and rescue squad personnel because they're out there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 
they're the people who have that uh, I'll be there, never your fear kind of attitude, which is essential to serving you and me, which is essential to serving the uh, serving the borough. We, we need to back them up in every way. Abolishing police departments, abolishing fire departments, and abolishing rescue squads is never the answer. And mark well what I just say, ladies and gentlemen, should never be the answer. And I'll keep saying things like this until this nationwide stuff stops. And also, we need to back our military personnel. They're, they're out there to serve our country 24 hours a day, seven days a week both at home and abroad. We failed to back our men during the war in Vietnam. Three men from Garwood lost their lives fighting for our country. Three men, ladies and gentlemen, and many more from many town, cities and towns across the country. They loved us so. Every day in a hundred ways they told us so. In honesty, in affection, they told us so. <clears throat> they loved us so. Every day in a hundred ways they showed us so. With loyalty and bravery, they showed us so. They are our defenders. And they kept us free. They took an oath to guard us and fought for liberty. They loved us so. And we should know. For we loved them so. And finally... We need to pressure the state legislature in Trenton to force the reopening of some closed hospitals, such as Muhlenberg. We need those hospitals because what if another 9-11 attack occurs? We cannot dismiss that possibility. I don't want to see smoke well from behind trees like I did on September 11th. I don't want to see that type of thing happening again. That's why we need to pressure the state legislature to reopen some closed hospitals so that uh, many people can be safe. We need to back them um, back up our medical personnel in every way. And we need to reopen some hospitals that are closed because if another emergency occurs, we'll need them badly. The sooner we activate those closed hospitals, the better off we all will be. Do make myself clear. Thank you, Mr. Pritchard. Is there anybody else who wishes to address the mayor and council? Good evening, Tom Evelina, 256 North Avenue. Um, actually, Mr. Harris answered a lot of my questions about um, Ordinance 2307, the rental property ordinance. Um, one of my big questions was what, precip well, what, what, what precipitated it? Second of all, uh, whether or not it was going to require have a requirement for a new employee, which obviously it is, and what the salary range was, and you already addressed that. Um, in reading the ordinance, a lot of people, a few people asked me if Vermella, this applies to Vermella. As I read it, it does, unless I'm mistaken. I mean, I'm not a legal scholar by any stretch of imagination. Um, other than it being a money grab, I, I don't see a purpose to it, to be perfectly honest unless there was something that precipitated it. The other question, I, big question I have about the ordinance is, is this a construction code? A construction code inspection or a fire related inspection, which is already done every time an apartment changes hands. Um, resolution 2307, the enhanced security resolution, I take exception to the fact that you're taking almost $9,000 from a recreation trust fund that should go directly towards the kids and applying that to reduce the amount of money that you're going to buy. That money should go directly towards the kids so that they benefit from it. And I don't know that they're going to benefit from a key fob system. They, so it should be something that directly impacts them. Um, 
I believe that's all I have. Oh, with respect to Vermella and the, the wanting to redo their rental ordinance, um, they did have an opportunity, and I don't know if council's aware of it, to rent out all 10,000 square feet to a restaurant. It's an existing restaurant. The owners were going to open a second location. They dropped the ball. Six to seven lease revisions. Stuff that was supposed to be left out was put in. Stuff that was supposed to be put in was left out. After the seventh revision, they walked away. They were spending almost a half a million dollars on a liquor license. They had everything lined up. These guys were in the game and they walked away. So if they're unable to rent their retail space, that's really on them. I don't think they should be permitted to open businesses that are going to compete with existing businesses already open. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Evelina. Is there anybody else who wishes to address the mayor and council? Mr. Patterson? Good evening, Mayor, ladies and gentlemen, the council, Bruce Patterson, 325 Willow Avenue, a bunch of little items. Uh, the congressional grant, uh, I think you discussed it last year. Uh, I forgot what it was about. If you could just explain a little further. Uh, Reso 104 through 106 is the three uh, Gator purchases, which uh, the business administrator explained, but I, what, what, is, what is a UTV and, and what is it, the Gator? And why is there three of those resolutions? Uh, the yeah, 20, yeah, the 25 mile per hour speed limit uh, being planning to be imposed on South Avenue. I really take exception to it because once you put a 25 mile per hour speed limit on that road, it'll be equal to the 25 mile per hour speed limit on all the other grid roads which parallel South Avenue. So everybody will think this road is exactly the same as all the other roads. And of course we have the people uh, cutting corners and they will be using like Willow where I live and, and also Second Avenue. I, I think the issue there is if you do wanna reduce the speed, reduce it down to 30 miles an hour, at least make it look like it's actually a main artery that goes through our town. I, 25 miles per hour, that's, that's an issue in my eyes anyway. I don't know what you guys are gonna determine. The, uh, yeah, I'm just wondering about the uh, police officer um, ranks. Are the, all the levels filled now of, of the officer ranks? Uh, also the, oh yeah, here's, an, here's another old thing that maybe Russ and I are the only ones that probably know about this, but, but the Rotary Club, wasn't that a business, administra business organization? I mean, we're talking about a new business organization. We already had one. It was called the Rotary Club. That went defunct, I don't know when, well before my time. And actually, uh, the DPW just took down the old Rotary Club signs, which I told them to put at the DPW yard. You're, you're probably aware of it. So, I, I mean, why don't you just reinvigorate the Rotary Club? I'm sure it's still around and whatever the covenants and conditions are about that for the businesses. Uh, Westfield just lost a lawsuit uh, with... PSE and G, they, they were the plaintiffs against PSE and G. And it had to do with utility poles on the right of way through, the, uh, through Westfield. And my question is, I, I know a couple of years ago, probably before your time, there was these high kilovoltage uh, power, you were here, Mayor, uh, on the council, the, the high kilo, kilovoltage wires coming through Garwood. I'm just wondering, that lawsuit that Westfield lost, is that now opening the gates to these high kilovoltage wires and large tall poles coming through the town? If somebody could say yes or no, or look in, into it. And I'm not just talking about these tall poles that are installed already, or maybe taller ones. Uh, oh yeah, I just, wanna, I just wanna thank uh, the mayor and the council and, and Kyle. Uh, for having the twenty five hundred dollars for the um, senior club, I'm the I'm the treasurer. So thank you very much for uh, funding our transportation costs of the trips that we make. So thank you very much. And and uh, yeah, I guess the question also is now that now that that parking lot is basically done next to the fire department, when does it look like we'll be moving out of the uh, 
Knights of Columbus over to the fire department. This is the senior club that I'm talking about. Uh, last, I guess last, yeah, Reso 109, um, Jennifer Guerrero is, is resigning the celebrations committee and she was the uh, chair for a couple of years and she was a gung-ho person. And unfortunately she's resigning, but, and I'm not really gonna get into details, but I actually was at that meeting in April where you sat in and the historical and the celebrations here and, you know, not getting into details, but I actually do understand why she is resigning. Um, it's sad to see her go. She was exhibiting good leadership in that celebrations and it was expanding into various other events. So I'm sad to see her go. I, I don't wanna see celebrations collapse. I mean, right now we lost the, the Memorial Day celebration that, that the council actually had to pick up the ball and run with it. Thank you very much. Um, there were some issues with it, but you know, it's over and done. <laughs> Uh, okay. that, that, tell me five minutes, right? Let's go. You got All it. right. I got one more thing. Let's see if I have one more thing here. <laughs> Just love to fill up that time. Uh, no, at, except that the county meeting that was tonight, that would have pushed me to be late. The county meetings pushed off till next week. Uh, is that my mom again? That's, calling that's your, that's your timer. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. Is there anybody online that wishes to address the mayor and council? Okay. Okay, can you state your name and address? Hello, this is Michelle Capobianco at 404 Myrtle. Okay, hi, Ms. Capobianco, you can go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, first, I would like to thank the council for updating and raising the sewer connection fees that I requested at the uh, May 11th council meeting. I was away for a few weeks when during the last two council meetings, so I wanted to thank you all for doing that. Um, and next, I would like to publicly thank Mr. Harris, our borough administrator, for being so responsive with me as well as other residents. Um, I thank him obviously personally, but I wanted to make a point to do it publicly. Um, I've reached out to Mr. Harris about different issues and he's always very helpful and responds in a timely manner. It gives me the answers, even though some of them may not obviously be sometimes the ones I want to hear, but I appreciate them nonetheless. <laughs> um, I, I recently gained a better understanding of how much he has on his plate and appreciate all that he does for Garwood. Um, I also have talked with other residents who have the same exact sentiment, so I wanted to um, speak about that. Um, the second topic that I wanted to speak about was the ordinance 2313, the amendment um, to the Vermella redevelopment plan, allowing the pharmacy use. Um, as you know, I sent the council two letters as well as email regarding this topic um, with multiple examples of the poor marketing of Vermella retail. I am not in agreement with allowing the, the pharmacy use at this time. The marketing of the Vermella retail has not been effective. Marketing 101 rule, know your target audience. Right. And, and even, you know, in the last meeting, when I watched it back, the um, leasing director or manager, program manager was there and said, you know, there were some, you know, I guess miscommunications on their part, you know, but it doesn't really, <laughs> that's not a really warm, fuzzy feeling that they're marketing to businesses that were never allowed. So, I mean, in my mind, they're wasting their time. They got letters of intent from a business that's not allowed there. Um, and they really didn't explain during the last council meeting everything that they've done. They kind of glossed over it. And, you know, I, I really feel that, you know, you as a council need to hold them way more accountable for, for their marketing there. I don't feel the borough should make an exception due to the Russo retail marketing failures. And the main reason I feel this way, it has nothing, I really personally don't, doesn't matter to me where the pharmacy goes, but I feel this way is that Garwood, you know, the, the Better Life Pharmacy that wants to move to Vermella, leaves its current Garwood location and an empty space hurting that landlord. I might feel differently if the exception was al allowed and asked for, for some great new exciting concept that we don't already have an existing Garwood business for. Um, moving a pharmacy literally about a thousand feet is not a, a big win for Garwood or Vermella like it's been touted to be. Vermella is on a pilot program. I don't know if anybody's thought of this aspect of it as well. Vermella is not paying regular property taxes on the improved building there. 
yes, they may be missing out on rent by not by not having them unleased, but I'm sure if they have a good accountant, they show it as a loss somehow. So it probably is really not costing Russo a whole lot of money to have the spaces empty. It is hurting the borough not to have the retail spaces rented as we aren't receiving pilot funds as there is no revenue being generated for, they said, about a year um, that the retail was ready last summer. So it's been about a year. It, it will also hurt the pharmacy's current property owner as they are not on a pilot program. They have to pay their full property taxes as well as losing the pharmacy rent. Properly marketing and renting the Vermella retail spaces is a Russo marketing responsibility, not the borough of Garwood responsibility to make exceptions. In my letters, I asked the council to wait at least six months before even considering Russo's request for any exceptions. And at that point, I would, you know, to come with serious data of exactly what they've done to try to rent the spaces. Even the marketing manager at the last time said they're being picky, they're doing this, they don't want, you know, types of businesses that will that are too loud, they want franchises, you know, we don't really know what is going on over there. Um, I also ask that if Russo is requesting to change the terms of the redevelopment agreement, that the borough should also ask for higher pilot fees. I would hope that you all consider the big picture and everything involved by making an exception and directly hurting a, another Garwood landlord by doing so. Thank you, that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Is there anybody else online? Okay, can I ask for a motion to close public comment? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, let's start, Mr. Evelina. Um, you were speaking of the um, rental or I wasn't sure exactly what ordinance you were speaking to uh, exactly, um, but you were talking about the different fees involved uh, with rental properties. Um, and yes, it, it, we have spoken about this, that it will require a new employee, as Mr. Uh, Harris said. It does apply to Vermella, so I can answer that question for you. Um, we have spoken about what precipitated it. Um, as much as it, it it's great to have this revenue. Um, what precipitated it, it was that there was a couple of mandates that came down from the state. Uh, most towns already have this registration, Are by the way. We're, we're one of the few, I can't even count on my hand, how that don't have it. Um, so if you rent out an, uh, your, a how, uh, like your house or an apartment in another town, you would have already had this uh, law to follow that you would have had to register your uh, your rental and pay a certain fee for that. So Garwood isn't, this isn't new. This isn't something new. It's new to Garwood, but it isn't something new. Um, and what precipitated it, as I say, is a couple of mandates. We are now having to take care of the rental insurance for the state and verify that each rental unit has the proper insurance. Uh, Mr. Abramson, do you want to speak a little bit to this or are you, you I good? I was just going to add, we also, which we still have to do as well, is the lead paint that the state was enforcing. Getting to that, Mr. Well. Abramson. I just saw you pick the microphone and thought maybe, okay. Yeah, there's another, and there's another mandate, as um, Mr. Abramson said, that is coming down the pike. It's a little bit more involved. Um, and we're going to have to deal with that is uh, we will have to be going into uh, and inspect uh, rentals that were, um, built before a certain time period and inspect for lead. And so this requires somebody to do all of this paperwork, essentially. It is a lot of paperwork and organization. And in addition, we are sort of combining it with the, the property maintenance uh, aspect of it all. Um, and in addition, something that had come up on council before, and I am glad that we moved ahead with is uh, turnover, uh, occupancy turnover inspections. This will keep uh, our rental properties uh, safe for our residents. It ensures that our landlords are keeping up with their properties in between tenants. 
Um, and I have certainly had complaints from residents before about various landlords and that sort of thing. And we really don't have any teeth or we didn't have any teeth to go in and, and make any inspections until this. So, um, but essentially that wasn't why we created this. That was a sort of a bonus that we can add into it now that we will have a new employee, but the mandates are what precipitated it. Mr. Harris, is there anything I left out? <laughs> no, I think it really comes down to the volume of rental properties in Garwood with over close to 500 individual properties, which equals approximately 1500 rental units. And that, you know, verifying the insurance, conducting the lead inspection, uh, we're required, we've been required to do a landlord registration for years by the state, which we haven't we just been doing. Never did. So, yeah. you know, this is, like you said, it's not a new, it's new to Garwood, but you look at all the surrounding towns, they, they already have had these positions in place for years and they don't have nearly the number of rental properties that Garwood has, you know, without, I think it became known to investors and landlords around that, hey, Garwood is the wild west, we can get in there and there's, there's no fees and nobody's going to bother us. So, you know, we need to, we need this position and we need to catch up. Thank you. Fully agree. Um, the resolution on the security for the rec fund. Um, I, I do disagree. I think it does benefit the kids. We are, we're putting in all of the security at the rec complex. Um, listen, there, there's equipment and everything in, in that building that, you know, has at times gotten ruined and we have to replace and pay for whether it's accidentally or not. Um, this will allow us from having to spend more funds to do that sort of thing. It keeps, it will, allow us to keep um you know everything safe and secure in there so while we are taking a small portion from the 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 trust fund it, you know our kids are benefiting from it so i you know i'll, I'll respectfully disagree on that one um mayor if i could just yeah. chime in for a second so i just wanted to clarify this is coming out of the trust account for the athletic field complex correct there's a numerous source of funding there's some of it's being funded through the athletic field con complex trust. Some is being funded from the 2019 uh, Recreation Kids Trust that had a match that I believe was in an older bond ordinance and the remaining balance for the uh, Borough Hall and Fire Department is coming out of the bond ordinance from 2023. Okay. So those trust accounts are, do not impact the programming that we use for the children. That's completely separate. Correct. Yes, the AFC trust, as it's known as the athletic field complex trust, that is money that is comes in from these field rentals that can only be used to upgrade and maintain the facilities of the uh, recreation complex. Thank you. So thank if you. that that was the confusion. Then thank you for pointing that out. I appreciate that. Um, and I think that's it. Um. You gave some comments on the, the pharmacy, and I'll touch on that in a little bit. Um, oh, uh, you gave some, okay, some comments on, on some leases in there. But honestly, that's not something we can comment on. I that's It's private business, and we can't determine what went on. So I will move on. Mr. Patterson, um, the congressional grant was uh, for paving on 2nd and 3rd Avenue that we've spoken about. Uh, the curbing will also be redone on third. Um, so that's it's those two blocks that we've been speaking about for a long time. And I'm so glad that they're finally going to get going. Um, 104 to 106 resolution on your consent agenda, UTV, utility vehicle. This is sort of like a an all-purpose vehicle, which is going to be really helpful for them. And the other two um, yeah, resolutions comment. are for accessories. Yeah, I can comment on that. The way that the dealer uh, required one purchase order to be issued to John Deere, uh, specifically John Deere, um, and then the other two resolutions, one's for, they're each for accessories for the piece of equipment. They're off of different co-ops requiring different uh, resolutions for approval. And this is just a, um, it's a utility vehicle. It's going to have a plow and a spreader on it. It's, it's used for doing uh, 
for snow removal, it's going to be the sidewalks, the underpass, those, those areas in town, but they're going to also use it throughout the summer months for, you know, work, work at the recreation complex that uh, they'll be able to get uh, plates on it so they can drive on the street for doing small projects, whatever it needs to be done. It's a very versatile piece of equipment. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Um, the speed limit, um, I can, you know what, the police committee's meeting next week, they can maybe just discuss that for a few minutes if they want to keep that at 25 uh, miles an hour. But um, I'm not opposed to it, but we can have that discussion. The PD, the the ranks have not been filled. Um, it, it's something that we will be working on in the future. And the Rotary Club, uh, Councilman Carney, if you want to bring that up to the Small Business Advisory and see what they're saying. I don't know too much about the Rotary Club, to be honest. So, um, Yeah, the Rotary Club isn't in my wheelhouse. Come on, bad joke. Um, I didn't even... Uh, I, I Rotary, I, wheel, it's going to take a minute uh, for everybody. Yeah, sure you will, Russ. Okay. Um, no, I do know that uh, there were Rotary Clubs. I think they were more of a service uh oriented organization but i honestly don't remember them but the what i'm talking about with a small business association like this this was brought forth by our board members uh, i do support it and it would be similar in, in concept uh where we would want to develop it out to is like uh you see the organizations called downtown westfield downtown cranford like garwood is starting to build up a an actual downtown with pedestrian traffic uh and the new business owners that came in along with uh, several who've been uh, active on the board since day one uh, felt really strongly about getting the Garwood focused uh, business community together more often and having a way, even something as simple as an email distribution list mm. that they can hit or that we can push out. Like say, we're going to be speaking about parking and meters at some point. Some of the businesses may actually want to come in and listen to that discussion or the owners may want to contribute to it. And there's no, solid way to get that information out right now. And not every business pays to be a member of the greater Westfield area chamber of commerce. And that organization also has a multi, you know, jurisdiction focus. So this would be something specific for Garwood. It's something our community asked for. So um, I, I will see if anybody on the board knows uh, <laughs> about Rotary clubs, but um, okay. And I'll I'll report back uh, after we meet again in July. Okay. Um, PSC and G. Uh, no, I it it shouldn't have anything to do with Garwood. Uh, and the last I was told, the the high wattage poles are not uh, the, a route through Garwood was not viable anymore. So yeah, Mayor, I can confirm that. I met with the our government affairs rep probably about a year ago, and he informed me at that time that the project is dead for the high voltage. At least through Garwood. Yes. Through Garwood. <laughs> okay. Um, as for moving the uh, seniors back to the fire department, I think it's something that um, Mr. Harris and I and the uh, senior club board can talk about and should talk about uh, because I do know a lot of the members enjoy it over there with the space and the parking is readily available. Um, you, you still might run into parking issues over here, of course. Um, because it is during the day that our club our club meetings are. Um, so I will, uh, Mr. Harris, you and I can talk uh, about setting up a meeting with with the club board. Um, Ms. Capabianco, thank you for your comments about Mr. Harris. I completely agree. Uh, and um, he's very responsive to our residents. We'll, we'll keep you around for a little longer. How about just how about that? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, as as for the pharmacy, you know, I know we are going to have a lot of discussion about it um, next week. And, you know, I, I or not next week, possibly the next meeting after it goes to planning board. Um, I, I will say that to me, this is less about their marketing, because I think the original intent of the uh, plan was not to have the big box stores. I think maybe it, it's it's a slip up that the square footage wasn't included, the no more than, and we can correct that at this point um, because, you know, I, I don't think having a sort of smaller mom and pop pharmacy is 
um, disadvantage is a disadvantage to our town. Um, and in fact, you you mentioned the pilot, but that is one of the reasons I am inclined to move this ahead. Is that the longer we wait, the less pilot money we get. When they when these stores are filled, it means more pilot money for the town. That doesn't mean we want to just go willy nilly, and we want them to pick something that's not um, going to stick around. So, and I don't think I think they're showing that they're not doing that. Um, but this is a viable prospect and will increase our, our pilot money. Uh, waiting another six months, that's six months of, of loss for us. Um, and in terms of, um, you know, I, I know that the argument here is, is about am, empty space for hurting a landlord versus moving it. I don't see that as being our, what our decision is about. We're not deciding whether a pharmacy over one spot should move to another spot. That happens to be the pharmacy he's uh, in in talks with, but it could easily, you know, that pharmacy could go away and he could easily find another pharmacy. To me, it's about the the business itself that we're actually uh, fixing on the redevelopment plan. Um, and a business can move in and out at any point. Uh, so they might decide they don't, they've said they don't like that spot, that business could move out of Garwood. Um, so that's, you know, the, the risk any landlord takes on. Um, so I'm not looking at it as versus, uh, hurting one landlord versus another. Uh, I'm looking at it as, is this use, uh, a good use in that area for Garwood, uh, and I and I agree that it is. Um, and I respect anybody's opinion that's different, but I but I agree that it is. I don't think we as a council or government really should be getting into um, what business, you know, that the fact that it, one's moving from one to another and a landlord might be affected. I, I don't think that's really what our question is. Um, but that's that's my opinion. I know we will have further discussion on this next time. Um, and with that, I think I've hit everything. Um, so thank you, everybody, for your questions and comments. And we will move on to our consent agenda. OK. Do I have any uh, resolutions that need to be removed from the consent agenda? Yes, Mayor, I'd like to pull resolution 23-114 and 23-117. Okay, anybody else? Yes, hi, Mayor. I'd like to um, remove 23-097. Okay. Anybody else? We're good. Okay. Can I have a motion to adopt the consent agenda as amended? So moved. Second. Getting there. Okay. Uh, roll call, please, Mr. Harris. Uh, Councilwoman Hers. Aye. Councilman Carney. Aye. Councilman Lazaro? Aye. Councilman Nori? Aye. Councilwoman Salmon? Aye. And Council President Graham? Aye. Okay, uh, let's start with 23-097. We have a lot of resolutions. Um... <laughs> page page three, Mayor. Got it. Okay, do we want, does anybody uh, have discussion? Uh, Mayor? I was yes. Vote. I was pulling, I pu was pulling that from the consent agenda to recuse myself. Okay, thank you. Councilman Carney, did you have any? I was um, just gonna make a motion to adopt. Okay. Uh, so I have a motion. Can I have a sec second? Okay. Uh, roll call please, Mr. Harris. Uh, who was the first and the second on that one? Uh, yeah, this first. Council, uh, yeah. Councilman Carney and then Councilman Lazaro, right? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Council, Councilwoman Hers. 
I'll recuse myself. Uh, Councilman Carney? Aye. Councilman Lazaro? Aye. Councilman Nordy? Aye. Councilwoman Salmon? Aye. And Council President Graham? Aye. Okay. Uh, resolution 23 114. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none. Um, roll call, please, Mr. Harris. Uh, right? Or, uh, yeah. I'll motion to adopt. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Second. 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 Okay, roll call, Mr. Harris. Councilwoman Hers. No. Councilman Carney. Aye. Councilwoman or Councilman Lazaro. Aye. Councilwoman Nolte. Aye. Councilwoman Salmon. No. Council President Graham. Aye. Okay. Um, resolution 23-117. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Okay, roll call, please, Mr. Harris. Uh, Councilwoman Hers? No. Councilman Carney? Aye. Councilman Lazaro? Aye. Councilwoman Nordy? Aye. Uh, Councilwoman Salmon? No. Council President Graham? Aye. Okay. Uh, Mr. Harris, we have the additional resolution not on the consent agenda, 23-120. Uh, Can I get a uh, motion for 23-120? So moved. Second. Second. Roll call, please, Mr. Harris. Councilwoman Hers. Aye. Councilman Carney. Aye. Councilman Lazaro. Aye. Councilwoman Nordy. Aye. Councilwoman Salmon. Aye. Council President Graham. Aye. Okay. Any new business? All right, moving to payment of claims. Mr. Harris? Be it resolved that the following claims is approved, be and the same are hereby ordered paid when properly signed and verified, and the payment of payrolls as listed is hereby confirmed and ratified. Do I have a motion to adopt payment of claims? So moved. Second. 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 Uh, roll call, please, Mr. Harris. Councilwoman Hurst? Aye. Councilman Carney? Aye. Councilman Lazaro? Aye. Councilman Nolte? Aye. Councilwoman Salmon? Aye, but I recuse myself from the payment to myself for a recreation refund. And Council President Graham? Aye. Okay, the regular meeting of the mayor and council will be held on Thursday, July 13, 2023 at 7 p.m. in council chambers. Information for meetings is posted on the borough website. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.